Good morning, Slash Kateers and Slashaholics, and welcome to episode number 17 of Slash Track Saturday Mornings. And you may be asking yourself, what do you mean episode 17? What the hell is this show, and where are the other 16 shows? Josh, all those questions will be answered right now by you. By me. The 80 Slasher Librarian from the Slash Tracks Network. Well, over on the Slash Tracks Network, uh, secondary channel with alex vanover uh we have this little show called slash track saturday mornings where we take you back to your childhood uh our childhood and we review and discuss and kind of riff on a little bit um like shows like power rangers uh he-man uh saved by the bell we're gonna do some my pet monster eventually we might even do some tattooed teenage alien fighters who knows but today to show everybody here on the uh primary channel what we're doing, we are going to be breaking down, discussing, and revisiting one of the best episodes of the real Ghostbusters cartoon from the 80s, When Halloween Was Forever, with Sam Hain. So if you haven't done so, if you enjoy what we do today and you want to see more of this, then, you know, we've been waiting for a little while. Get over there and subscribe. The link will be in the uh, description and the pinned comment uh, for the other channel. And you'll have all kinds of cool retro stuff to go check out. It's not all horror content. And it's, like like we said, it's more retro uh, stuff like that. So horror content here, retro throwback, childhood revisiting and everything over there. So here's a little mixture of the two. Uh, we thought it was perfect for Halloween to show it to you here as a preview of what the show's all about here on the channel. Um, with yeah. 80 slasher librarian so there's about a fifty-seven thousand subscriber discrepancy from channel to channel here uh we'd like to we'd like to somehow convince uh five thousand other people who watch this episode to come over to the other channel and check out all the other stuff we've got going on yes. but josh i am particularly excited about october this this year and i'll tell you why not only are we doing the Halloween special for the Ghostbusters episode right here for Slash Track Saturday morning? But Josh and I, over on the second channel, we're going to do our very first wrestling-themed anything. That's uh, not just a wrestling, you know, headlines, whatever, in the news show. We're going to be doing a Halloween Havoc special. And Josh and I are going to, like, kind of break down the Hulk Hogan Ultimate Warrior Rematch. second match that they had at uh halloween havoc i think it was like halloween havoc 98 mm -hmm. and i think they even went long that that's why the goldberg uh ddp ddp match got cut off i think was that the same year yeah and like the next night on nitro they had to finish the match or something yeah there was a it was a bad they had to refund a bunch of money on the they, wcw ended up having to refund a bunch of money because it went off the air they went they went long but we're going to talk about the build-up to that match uh, the match itself and kind of the ramifications of what happened after the match. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of jokes. I'm sure there's going to be some warrior fuel advertising in that episode. Be on the lookout for that. Um, but like Josh said, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say we also are going to be, because of you guys voting, uh, riffing Pumpkinhead 3 Ashes to Ashes before Halloween. So Yeah, that's that's the Halloween. Uh, are, are we going to drop that on Halloween night or no? Yeah, that that sounds good to me. Okay. Uh, Halloween. So be on the lookout that on the lookout for that. Season three and a half of Slash Tracks. Halloween special, Pumpkinhead Three. But Josh, today, now that all the business is out of the way, we're gonna be talking about when Halloween was forever. 
And Josh, this was season one, episode eight. As we talked about before the storm <laughs> in Oregon made us re-record this part. <laughs> uh, the, the original air date, Josh, was November 1st, 1986. And we were kind of talking about how this was a actually after Halloween. Yeah, the day after. Yeah. But, you know, it makes sense because the episode is called When Halloween Was Forever. So, you know, Halloween was yesterday. It's not as bad as like, uh, like you were saying, the Treehouse of Horror airing on like November 5th. Yeah, yeah, I you know. that's egregious on the Simpsons part. They're like, we're the Simpsons. It's like season seven or eight. We can get away with this. We're still really popular. You know what we should do right now? Hmm. We should do what all the greatest 80s cartoons always did as soon as their uh, opening intro credits played. What's that? You know, the Ghostbusters played. We just saw the Ghostbusters trap all the ghosts. Uh, Winston dropped his hamburger. Slimer slurped it up. The credit opening credits are over. Time for a commercial break. All right, let's do it. Whew, the real Ghostbusters will return after these messages. This summer, coming to a supermarket near you, there's going to be a great new high C flavor with an outrageous food taste. And what are we going to call it? Ecto Cooler. I see Ecto Cooler. <laughs> Slimer's new food drink. You've been warned. We now return to the real ghost. Anybody else thirsty for uh, uh, orange, tangerine, citrus, high C Ecto Cooler right now? Because this guy is. That kid, the kid in that Ecto Cooler commercial, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, I think it's Pit Stain from Pete and Pete. Ooh, or endless, it's either pit stain or endless Mike. It's one of the two. I think it's the one who's chasing Pete and Pete on Halloween and they're calling them Halloweenies and they're breaking the pumpkins. I don't know if you guys, if the slash aholics and slash Gateers, if you've seen that episode of Pete and Pete, the Halloween special, it's available on YouTube. Comment down below. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. Yeah, if that's right the guy. There. Let us know, you know, and uh, when we start doing snick reviews over on another channel, Pete and Pete's going to definitely be a part of that at some point. Baby. Oh, dude, Danny Tamborelli himself, uh, Little Pete, he like was responsible for almost all Nick program. He was the Rob Deerdeck of <laughs> Nickelodeon there for a little bit. He was on Figured Out. He was on Pete and Pete. He was on all that. Um, he just did everything over there. And he was like, aside from Pete and Pete, he was like the most mid uh nickelodeon star for me i never thought what he did was spectacular <laughs> i could have used more cal mitchell or more keenan or more danny tamborelli you know budnick give me some more of those guys i used to love i used to love watching figure it out that was a fun little uh show where like bring, the nick celebrities would try to guess what the person's talent was yeah that was fun. I just now remembered that one. I mean, good stuff. That's um. Well, hey, I just said more Danny Tamborelli when I was bitching about Danny Tamborelli. Uh, Danny Cooksey, Budnick. That's what I meant. Correction, right there before the comments hit me down below. <laughs> Actually, you said Dana Tamborelli twice. Hey, Josh. Yes. This show uh, was directed by uh, by a very big time director. Actually, I was very surprised to see. You're not going to recognize his name, but he's. His track record is super impressive. His name is Richard Rainis, and he directed 26 episodes of this show. So he did 26 episodes of Ghostbusters. He did 13 episodes of the ALF cartoon as a director. He produced over 709 episodes of The Simpsons, uh, and he also won eight primetime Emmys, I'm guessing, for The Simpsons. Wow. Uh, so, oh, and he also created, developed, and wrote the 1997 Ghostbusters reboot, Extreme Ghostbusters. Oh, cool. I love that show. That's good. I, it didn't get in a long enough run. They, like, it just came out in a weird time. Actually, a little tidbit here. I'll be the guy in the comments before somebody beats me to it. The Ghostbusters toy license was running out. So, Extreme Ghostbusters was pitched and made as a one season show just so they could re-license the toys uh, through Kenner and have a Ghostbusters toy line on the shelves because there was no new movies the cartoon had been off for a few years so 1997 extreme Ghostbusters you get to sell the toys again 
they just they but they didn't intend on having it. What if it went for two to three seasons? I guess that you know that they just if they got if they had I think all they wanted to do was the one forty episode season from what I've okay. read. That it that's all it was ever planned to be. So okay. Um, okay, Josh, this one's kind of interesting. I usually sometimes I deep dive to the writers and stuff, but I don't really have to because this is just a really interesting fun fact about this episode. Okay. Two of the writers on this specific episode were Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis. I can see that. So Harold, can I. Uh, the way they wrote Peter, I kept, I had plenty of notes here where I talk about it's very Bill Murray, Peter, uh, yeah. the, way, the way he's, his lines. Because it's not like that every episode. He's always the smart ass and everything, the overconfident one. But in this episode, I could totally, it, it felt like a Ghostbusters movie. I would love to see this story as Ghostbusters 5, you know, like Sam Hain uh, showing up, big battle. That would be great. You know, what's funny that you say that, because um, I had those exact same thoughts before I saw that they wrote on this movie, because the Sam Hain, Halloween, whatever, there's a lore built up around it about how, and then the, like the, um, it shows up in America and all of a sudden all these interesting kind of uh, things are happening and it all correlates to when the artifacts from Ireland showed up. It's yep. very Dan Aykroyd. It's, it's just like the new Ghostbusters movie. It reminds me of the death, the death freeze, the death chill. And the video game that came out in 09, the Gozer exhibit was being opened up at the museum and something released the energy, you know, and Dan and Harold wrote that story too. Um, but yeah, this was yeah fantastic story, very creepy. Um, but yeah, that, that not enough great. time, not enough time to flush it out. But they did a good job for the twenty-four minutes runtime for sure. Oh, and just so everybody knows, we're calling we're saying Sam Hain because that's what the ghost demon's name is in the cartoon. That's what everybody says. We are aware that it's pronounced Solin. We are aware of that, mm -hmm. uh, but we're going by this episode, so. Yeah, in my in my notes slash Alex, I just wrote the Halloween monster, <laughs> Pumpkinhead. Yeah, Pumpkinhead. Um, yeah, this is just a precursor. This is the birth pains for our riff of Pumpkinhead three. Uh, so okay, so this this show came out thirty seven years, eleven months, and sixteen days ago. It was a Saturday, of course. Uh, Josh, number one song in America was True Colors by Cyndi Lauper. And she was a very busy woman in the mid 80s. She was part of the rock and wrestling connection. She was helping Vince McMahon uh, get WrestleMania off the ground around this time. Uh, Josh, who was the WWF world champion when this episode aired in 1986? I don't know, brother. <laughs> he was Piper? in the, the whole coat. Yeah, yeah, Piper. Hey, sidetrack since you brought up Piper. Piper, like, easily was in talks to be the champion uh but hogan never like they could never come to agreement because piper refused to lay down for anybody so they couldn't trust piper to give the title back i i happen to think from my time in the business because uh, i've had promoters say this too a lot of wrestlers don't need a belt a belt is not just a way to like have to showcase who's leading the company but it can, most of the belts are there to help get a wrestler over and mm -hmm. like Jake, the snake, Rowdy, Roddy Piper, uh, people like that. They, Ted DiBiase, you know, and I know he had the million dollar belt, but that doesn't count. Like they didn't need a belt to get over. It's kind of like how some wrestlers need a manager because they're good in the ring, but they can't get over with the crowd boo or cheer because their mic skills suck. That's why they get yeah. a manager, you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, Hulk Hogan was the champion positively absolutely final answer no lifelines needed um you know the comparison of like wrestlers who don't need a belt to get over like slash tracks network we don't need a sponsor we don't need youtube ad money to get over we just get ourselves over yep. with our with our shows you know that yep. we don't need any of that we don't need any of listen we need no monetary compensation or any kind of fame for what we do because th the job well done josh is pay enough but if you if you if you disagree with us, there's always the Patreon link and cameo. Cameo. Yeah. Yeah. And if I you do a, want to be be a sponsor on one of these great shows we have, we have like ten shows at this point. 
Write us at slash tracks 2020 gmail.com. I got a, a $3.75 uh, cameo birthday request the other day. Excellent. So, yeah. Uh, Benjamin saying happy birthday to a guy named Josh. So excellent. Excellent. I love to hear that. Um, last little fun fact before we start breaking down the episode. All right. It's 1986. It's November 1st, Josh. Can you name, and they don't have to be in order. Can you name the top five TV shows that were on at that time? Alf. No, no, but good guess. Different strokes. No, but that's also a good guess. Uh, who, uh, Charles in charge. No. Full, uh, full house and all them didn't come out until like 87, 88. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit later. Um, man, I, I don't know. You're going to dude. when you hear these, you're going to be like, I, I know these. Okay. Do you, can, can I tell you a couple of them? Golden girls. Yes. Golden girls is five. You got one. All right. That's excellent that you got that because when I saw that, I was surprised. I'm surprised you got that. Um, can I tell you four? Okay. Murder She Wrote. Okay. Yeah. That went on for like 18 seasons, man. She, Angela Lansbury was like running the show there for a little bit. Was Matlock on there anywhere? No. Okay. These next three, you're going to be like, okay, duh. Uh, number three is Cheers. Oh, duh. Yeah. Number two, Family Ties. Okay, duh. And number one, Cosby Alice. Show. Cosby huh? Show. Oh, the Cosby Show. Yeah. Cosby yeah. Show. Yeah. Seinfeld's not around yet. Friends isn't around yet. It's eighty six. Bill Cosby's pushing uh, pudding pops. Fat Albert's still on. It's weird. Every time the Cosby Show would come on, I would get like really tired and pass out for some reason. That's weird. Did you yeah. also have a pudding pop or something to drink? Yeah, yeah, I had the jello shaker thing where you make your pudding, you know. What do you mean jello shaker? It was like a pudding shaker back then. You never had one of those as a kid? Like no, you know, but... like this container you fill it up with milk and the pudding mix and you shake it and you had pudding. No, but the only, time we had, the only time we had pudding at home was when my mom would get the mix and she'd like make it in these glass goblets and she'd <laughs> wrap them with saran wrap. Did, did your mom do that at all? Did she put them uh -uh. in the fridge? No, she I just got the little it's like $5 at Walmart for a shaker. And she would just buy the little cheap instant pudding things that Cosby was selling. And I'd, she'd just hand it to me and I'd shake it up. So that <laughs> Cosby, there's a commercial that is like not aged well at all. Um, there's this commercial of like Bill Cosby, like pouring somebody a drink um, of Diet Coke or whatever it was. And he's handing this person the drink and it's like just, just everything we know now. It just looks so bad. It looks so bad. You could put the Halloween music in the in behind him doing that or something. It'd be gold. Um, oh God. Um, I don't know if he's seen it yet, but I uh, I know a lot of you know about it. I sent him the Too Many Cooks, uh, video. It's like thirteen minutes long. <laughs> did you watch it yet? Oh my God. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's check it out, people. If you haven't seen it, because it it turns into like a slasher thing when you least expect it. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> song that never ends with so many actors on the show and then it becomes like a he-man cartoon and then star trek type show and then it's a slasher <laughs> thing it's a ghost thing there's an alf character that's a cat but yeah yeah the theme song is good too whoever wrote that did a really good job it just keeps oh. going it keeps going hey, got one more one more fun fact i just came up with i just got it today okay did you know the guy who sang, sang the theme song to full house also did the theme song to Family Matters, and he also did the theme song to Step by Step. Same yeah, guy. He did it for Jacko too. Then remember the theme song at the end of Jacko? Yeah, yeah, we're in that. We yeah. we are in that. And Crazy. Howling Three. Yeah, uh, that that's pretty neat. He did all those. I just realized mm. we had to redo the beginning of the show. So I just wanted to show anybody who doesn't know how dedicated of a Ghostbusters fan this slasher librarian really is. Right there, baby. Right there. We need to um we Dedicate. need to fill in that red again. Yeah, it's getting light. I'm getting old. And uh if you see me glancing over like this, my yeah. camera is here and Alex is over here. So sometimes I'm like, what's he doing? What's he doing? Um it's like a Brady Bunch uh episode. I'm like <laughs> looking Oh my up. god. Uh uh Usher was in one like for Jimmy Fallon late night. It was mm -hmm. like they did this thing where there's like a bunch of celebrities. And he was so sure that he was going to be the middle square that he was like, 
when they filmed it to like put it together, he was like the bottom left one, but he's like going, <laughs> hi, hi, and he's not even in the middle. <laughs> he just assumed. Uh, yeah, I know. I think I actually saw that, <laughs> and there's so many stars that are bigger than him <laughs> included in that. So for him to think he was going to be the center of that is ridiculous. It's just great. Hey, speaking of that, before we start breaking down the episode, let's since this is a very special episode, let's take another commercial break. All right, let's do it. There's a new cereal in the neighborhood with owls and ghosts. Tastes real good. Ghostbusters. Marshmallow ghosts. Fruit flavored O's. Ghostbusters taste great with milk and juice and toast. A nutritious breakfast with the ghosts. Ghostbusters. Fruit flavored O's. Ghostbusters. Marshmallow ghosts. Crunch. If you liked Ghostbusters the movie, you'll love the real thing. You can win a trip to the real Ghostbusters headquarters, bring a friend, and meet a real Ghostbuster. Ghostbusters! Look for the record in specially marked boxes of Ghostbusters Cookie Crisp and Diner Soaps. We now return to the real Ghostbusters. All right, Josh, it's time to break down this, uh, this amazing episode, this Halloween special. I want to say one thing. Mm-hmm. Before we get into the plot, though, I always noticed that, you know how like Slimer eats Winston's burger that he's about ready to eat and flies off? Yeah. Winston's just straight raw dog in that thing. He's got no chips. He doesn't have a drink. <laughs> he's just eating a plain dry ass burger or sandwich and has nothing. That's the biggest problem. Not Slimer stealing it. It's like, what is Winston doing here? And it's like a gray sauce or something on it. It's weird. Yeah. I just, I no chips, no fruits, nothing to drink, no ecto cooler, nothing. Uh, so, the animator just didn't want to add anything. No, and it's so random. But that shot, and then on Ninja Turtles, whenever they the the screen turns black and then the sword comes through it, those two parts were my favorite of those two intros. As a kid, and it's so funny because Anthony ended up thinking the same thing. On Ninja Turtles, he thought oh, the right. black stuff was cutting the slack. Because it says them turtle boys don't cut them no slack, right? As they cut mm -hmm. like the black screen in half, and the turtles yeah. cartoon. As a kid, I thought they were cutting the slack. I didn't know, you know, I was like four years old. I didn't know what that meant, you know, cut them no slack. And uh, it turns out when Anthony was like three or four, I showed him the old cartoon, and he thought the same thing. I thought that was so cool that we both went there as like toddlers. So it runs in the family, man. It's in the blood, son. Yeah, the slack. What did you think? of the groovy 80s music when this episode started i well i mean it's definitely of the times but i think i think has like kind of how we talked about earlier how dan Aykroyd and harold ramus had a part in this episode it felt it felt like more than just a cartoon episode it felt like a mini movie like yes. they were actually trying to adjust the soundtrack to like the theme Almost. It sure did. It felt like the kind of music I had that as a note. It felt like the kind of music they used in the movies. Yeah. And it even Definitely. has like yeah, it even has a precursor to what's going on. It, the news is like the first thing we see, right? And exactly the yeah, the news is the very first thing we see. Um and it so the show opens with her like giving a news report on kind of all the crap that's going on. Um the Ghostbusters are working overtime basically. Um it's Halloween Eve. And there's an issue, though. The Ghostbusters are working more than they have in a really long time, but it seems like it's getting harder and harder to do the job or get the job done. Each ghost is getting harder to deal with. Yep. And uh, Peter even gets to the point where he, he the first funny bit of the cartoon is it, you know, it cuts from the news people reporting on all the ghost stuff they're having to do to it goes to the guys actually busting ghosts. And Peter asks Winston or Egon, hey, what's what's green and slimy all over or something and he's like haha funny joke and he's like who's joking on like he just really wanted to know like he was yeah. one <laughs> that was pretty funny that was pretty good um it appears josh that the closer that they get to halloween uh the more the heart the cases are getting harder and harder and egon once they get home from finishing their most recent case they like go back to the to the firehouse and Peter is kind of like, well, we got to do something other than work right now. We should go do something. And Egon is just not having it. He's not entertaining it at all. He is like, he's at a table in the corner 
studying and he wants to figure out, you know, what the hell is going on. Yes. And while he's doing this, another nod to the, uh, cause they're trying to talk to him. He's like, uh, huh. Mm-hmm. Um, another nod to the movies, like, uh, Peter says this really cool, uh, funny line, like a politician. He's like, I didn't say that. And even if I did say it, I didn't say it. And, uh, the banter was just so good uh, while we we're sitting here. Um, Slimer comes in and he was all like trying to get, uh, Pete, they're all trying to get Peter's attention. So they tell Slimer, because Slimer's wanting like food, you know, I th- he's like, uh, I think Egon might have one in a cupcake in his socks or something, you know, like it felt if Slimer was in the movies, it felt like that's how they would have written him. You know, it just, it was cool. It took me back. They're like, there's another okay it's not this episode but i remember an episode of ghostbusters when they had the the suits that they wore uh in the original movie in the cartoon that like become possessed because they were like marshmallowed or whatever is that was wasn't that the episode yes because that's actually uh they're the real ghostbusters and what we saw in the movie was a movie based on what they went through like you Mm -hmm. find it out in that episode and after they beat gozer the gozerian Peter was supposed to throw the suits out or destroy them. And he just left them by the containment unit. Yeah. 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 I, that's yeah. what I remember. And yeah. I just remember thinking, I just remember thinking that's so cool that all the suits are the same color. Like in the movie, they, they even nailed that. We'll have to, we'll have to review that one sometime too, for sure. Yeah. That episode, um, they did a great job with this so far. The stakes are so high here. Egon tells them, you know, that something big's coming. Um, and I love that Egon was paying attention, even though he was busy at work, because the banter gets really good here. Uh, Egon whispers to Slimer that Peter has a, a sucker in his sock, a <laughs> lollipop. And he and Slimer attacks Peter's ankle. So yeah. it really felt like the movie to me. Like, so yeah. he's just a, he's able to like study uh like difficult to understand textbooks and like old history <laughs> books and he can also hold like basic conversations with his coworkers yes. and ghosts um so apparently josh ancient this is what egon has deduced ancient ruins from the seventh century ireland have arrived in new york about two weeks prior and ever since then the pke meter readings have been just off the charts so they're co- they correlate together so it's like since those uh you know ruins arrived uh Mm -hmm. all hell has basically basically broken loose in new york um yeah the stakes are so high the stakes uh for for an episode of the cartoon it was really cool to have all that lore and backstory on what's going on yeah and uh, a lot of people don't know this but alex and i had a guest spot in this episode on this cartoon uh we actually are in the next scene that pops up because at the front of the uh, firehouse, a couple of little goblins show up saying trick or treat. Yeah. Or no, that's not, that's not there yet. Is it? Uh, no, the goblins, there. We, we get to meet the goblins, you know, uh, they're out on the street and uh, it's us. The one with the spiky hair, I'll put a picture up. That was Alex. Uh-huh. And uh, the one in, you know, with the little poofy thing coming up, uh, that was me. That was, look at it. It actually looks like a, a Alex and me. It's, it blew me away. You look like right, a right, <laughs> right before Josh and I make our cameo, uh, two small ghosts unlock the ruins and they unleash the Halloween monster. Yep. So, and that was a great Sam Hain introduction, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he, <laughs> he's ready to go. Um, and a, a, my question about that scene is how do they know? Because they write something, right? It almost looks like a infinity symbol. That yeah, was but us. I, that was the goblins. That was us. That was oh, that us. was us. Yeah. How how did we know what to write? Uh, they just told us. They said you're going to go in there and draw a uh, uh, infinity symbol. Okay. And that's like, that's what wake, that's what always awakens demons, Alex. You know sure. that we do this every night. Sure. Um, uh, so the uh, Sam Hain is unleashed on New York. Here all hell me, as a kid. All hell starts breaking loose even more. And so we cut to Ray and Egon working on some sort of huge uh, contraption, some sort of device. What was that? What was that? I don't even know that they use it. They were working on it while like uh, one of them was playing checkers, uh, Egon or Winston was playing checkers with Slimer. But um, there's like this song playing called Midnight Action. 
Um, okay. I just it just really reminded me of the soundtrack in the movies. Um, and there was this really cool montage before we got back to the firehouse of like the ghost around the city when Sam Hain came back and started talking. Yeah. And there was like this well, this scream uh, that was really creepy, really creepy. I just wanted to get that out there because it, 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 this probably scared kids. This might, this episode might've been what led to them having to tone down the show. Um, but yeah, that's uh, they're, they're working on something. What were they working on? I don't, I, I, I wrote a question. I'm going to ask Josh. I, they never follow it up. I don't know what it is. I think it was just maybe something from a past job or something okay. upgrade or something, but okay. it's funny. Um, Slimer's playing checkers with Winston and, and Slimer's trying to eat the uh, checkers. So classic. Uh, Tasty. Delicious. And that's when we show up, man. Uh, trick or treating at the building. The two ghosts. Exactly. That, uh, awakened it yeah so um yeah. we janine gets her scene here where she opens it and they like literally blow her back across the office it should have broke her neck she's and dead she, yeah she's dead Janine's dead um and the ghostbusters put on their stuff and they're running after these ghosts us these goblins or whatever and i wanted to point out something about the quality of the direction here you can hear the voice actors being out of breath like as they're doing the running as the characters are running on screen yeah really good voice acting there i thought that was good direction because a lot of times you don't get that you know on a cartoon uh like when they're running they'll just be because they're trying to because they're they got lines they're doing as they're running with these proton packs and they're actually <sighs> breathing hard as they're doing it so i thought that sure. was impressive yeah, I think maybe that I think maybe that they were probably trying to emphasize that they're getting tireder and tireder because how like the day is getting longer and longer and longer and Halloween is like never going to end. And for some reason, they can't get any rest because um, like time is basically stood still, but all they're doing is working still. And how can they not catch us? We have tiny little legs, you know, I don't know. I, yeah. Hey, it's like that little girl, that clip on the Internet. It's like. Her, go go run sally and she's like i'm trying i got little legs little legs yeah um, so hey i was gonna say if janine dies when the uh ghosts you know blow their dir dirty old breath on her and she dies <laughs> and breaks her neck she wouldn't have to look for another job because they could just hire her as the ghost secretary since they are the ghostbusters yeah, yeah. ghostbusters i'm a ghost what do you want <laughs> um uh, oh go ahead Oh, I, I was just going to say, uh, again, Sam Haynes' voice is, like, so scary. Um, I felt bad for Slimer here because uh, Sam Hain is now, like, ordering everything not of this world to come to him. And Slimer's trying to resist it, but he's, like, getting pulled through the ceiling of the firehouse. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you feel he bad for him in that situation? Yeah, because Slimer obviously has one foot in the living and one foot in the afterlife, but he's definitely like an ally of the Ghostbusters. Sam Hain even uh, senses that later on when he's like, he, he's having a meeting, basically. He's calling all the little ones, right? He's, yeah. He calls them his little ones. <laughs> and he basically uh, wants Slimer to, to tow the company line and he can feel that Slimer is torn and uh Sli eventually once he confronts slimer for it he basically smells him out for being a traitor yeah and and he says so sam hain the halloween monster threatens slimer to join the midnight army or slimer is gonna pay the price he's gonna alive him instead of kill him i guess yeah i was i would dude i i was like <laughs> what kind of price is he gonna pay he's already dead i think uh he explains later like he's like got him in his hands rubbing him and he's like making him disappear or something. I guess like he can make you go away for. Oh, it's like that room in Beetlejuice, the Lost Souls, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but here's something that is very Dan Aykroyd, very Harold Ramis, and very Ghostbusters movie. Because when I watched it earlier this morning again, it actually caught me off guard. But yeah, Sam Hain's speech was scary, and Slimer having to pay the price. Big notes there. Um, but no. We, we see a diner, and you see the back of the cook, the waitress, and everything, and this customer is, like, asking for assistance, and when they turn around, the employees turn around, it's not just skeletons. It's, like, creepy, evil, demonic-looking 
uh, it's a skeleton crew. They work this, you know, they work the the boneyard shift. Um, but yeah, it it's it was actually scary as fuck. Those skeletons. What did you think? Was that kind of like the the taxi driver in Ghostbusters the movie? Yeah, it was good. Um, I think that I think that the early episodes of Ghostbusters, especially the ones that Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis worked on, are excellent, and they're just like mini movies. I feel like that you know, parents of the time probably caught wind of how realistic it was and eventually wrote a bunch of letters like they did with everything that was awesome in Lord our childhood. Parents. Lord Zed got replaced by King Mondo because of parents, by the way, on Power Rangers. Parents That's... are the ones that got rid of Lord Zed. Um... That's absurd. Listen, that is absurd. Um, it's like, oh, my kids are enjoying themselves and literally sitting in the living room eating cereal and not bothering anybody. Let's ruin it for them. Yeah, they're like, Lord Zed scares my kids so much. Really, it's just scaring the Karen mom. Yeah, it's um, like, and hey, back then in the 80s, I, I know a lot of slash Slashketeers and Slashaholics that watch this channel are not our age. There was a thing called Satanic Panic in the 80s. So, oh, basically, so basically, if you like Dungeons and Dragons or you liked scary movies or anything like that, you were basically of the devil and you were going to hell. Yeah. <laughs> so parents were hyper vigilant on like what toys you could play with, what kinds of movies you could watch, what books you could read. It's all bullshit. It was all an overreaction. And now we look back on it as ridiculous. But at the time, it was very real. Like my mom was, it, my mom was weird about He-Man uh, because Skeletor was a sorcerer. It was just oh, like, God. It, give me a break. Did you notice uh, the Rodeo Clowns cameo as the news, ca as the news anchor? <laughs> no, I didn't was, notice that. Yeah, there, there was a clown doing the news. Uh, oh, I did. Penny, it looked like Pennywise. It yeah, it like did Pennywise look like the clown. Or like Sweet Tooth or something. Yes. Yeah, it, it was pretty cool. Um, yeah. Then we um, find, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say, so Slimer is threatened, you know, they're gonna he's been smelled out, and the ghosts have basically taken over New York, and the guys are getting more and more and more tired. So yes. the stakes are rising even more. Uh, time is essentially stopped, mm -hmm. so t the clock isn't moving at all. It's it is stuck on Halloween. Yep, the clock has turned into a the big clock in town has turned into a ghost face. It's got a ghost face mm -hmm. on the the clock is a ghost now. Um, and they ask Egon what's going on, and Egon does this list. He starts counting it out. He's like, well, one Halloween uh, celebrates the creatures of the night. Two suddenly we're up to our hips in those creatures of the night three night is falling everywhere because they realize all around the world it's getting dark and four time is slowing down to a stop and i added and five the name of this episode is when halloween is forever so my estimation is that halloween is going to be forever uh the joke here is he actually says something like that he says so my estimation is halloween is going to be forever like he says the name of the title, like a Peter Griffin. Oh, he said the thing. He said it. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it, it's really cool because the next scene we get is them ghost busting more. But Ecto-1 like comes around the corner on two wheels. Mm -hmm. um, and even in animation, that siren. It's it's epic. It's it's uh, one of the greatest battle uh, calls or battle sounds ever because, you know, shit's about to hit the fan when you hear the siren for the Ecto-1. Um, I would say the Ecto-1, in my opinion, is more iconic than the Batmobile. And I'm probably going to take a lot of shit for that. No, no, not from me or not. And I, I like it. It's I like it better. It's more realistic. They took an old hearse. Egon and Dan Aykroyd are savants. They're geniuses. They, they built it up from nothing. I mean, Bruce Wayne is a fucking billionaire. It's like, how hard is it to do that if you're basically Elon Musk? Like, <laughs> like the, the Ghostbusters could barely afford rent at the firehouse in the first movie. It's like amazing that they're pulling the stuff off that they're pulling off. It's like they me and Josh go, ghost busting. Yeah, they got busy. They got really busy after the movies and made a made that bank, man. They made, what was it, $5,000 for catching Slimer in the movie? I won't pay oh. it. Okay, we'll hey. just let him back out. Hey, hey, check, I know that's that is funny. <laughs> Fine, we'll just let him go. Um, you know what's funny about that? I was talking, uh, I was thinking about that earlier when all hell kind of breaks loose and the Ghostbusters are like, How come nobody called us? And I was right. thinking to myself, 
what are you guys like the police at this point? Like they have to pay you. Maybe they didn't want to pay you. <laughs> <laughs> like you are a business. We did start um, charging a lot. Um, yeah. They probably made an ass load of money. Like if Halloween never ends, that's all you could bill. You could be have billable hours indefinitely. Maybe they're in on it. That city, they could get a city contract, you know, uh, get paid uh, from the taxpayers. Yeah. Um, there's two things happening in this scene that you, if you blink, you'll miss it kind of like it's an adult little innuendo. Uh, kind of like Peter's hair starts blinking and flashing in this scene because of bad animation. If you watch it, um, they meet Sam Haynes. Sam Haynes like way up on a building. He's talking to them for the first time and he's scary, like a badass, like, and he's witty too. He says some witty stuff. Um, but Peter's like, maybe this guy's not so bad. He's just been away for, you know, two or 3,000 years or millennia. Maybe he, we just need to help show him a good time. You know, it will chill out. And it's like, obviously, they were doing the the stay puff or, you know, he's a sailor, you know. He just, maybe if we get him laid, you know. Uh, he needs to have sex. <clears throat> definitely was saying they should get him laid. And when... When he leaves, when Sam Hain leaves them, uh, which I'm jumping ahead, we'll jump back. Uh, Peter says something like, I think the guy's just compensating for a small ego, a small something. And it was obviously a dick joke, right? Like, like, yes. So they were towing that line so carefully, you know? If, if Sam Hain did, in fact, get some action on the <laughs> night, on the night of Halloween that never ended, if he reached climax, would his orgasm would it would it just look like pumpkin seeds? Yes, pumpkin <laughs> seeds and pumpkin guts. Pumpkin I just seeds saw it in my pumpkin head. Guts. It's like, oh, Sam Hain obviously was here having sex because there's like pumpkin guts and innards all over the place, little seeds. Um, and then they just scoop it up and make a pie out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Waste not, want not. Um, Josh, we should go to another commercial break. We've got two more left, I think. So let's uh, let's see what we got. Ah! The real Ghostbusters will return after these messages. It was late one night in the castle of the Chicken McNuggets. <laughs> what are you making? Sauce. We're using my mummy's recipe. Mummy. Uh oh. Uh. This better be good. It'll be great. <laughs> Hmm, does your daddy have a recipe? <laughs> now McDonald's latest Halloween fashion. Just flying in McNebula and boy are his arms tired. Six toys with changeable costumes, one with each Happy Meal you buy your kids. Finally, McMummy in a spooky mix and match outfit. Finally. <laughs> we now return to the real Ghostbusters. All right, so so the guys do confront Sam Hain. Uh, Peter makes those great jokes and in the windows. Uh, Sam Hain is upset that they're bothering his little ones. <laughs> yes. And he basically says he's come to give his gift of eternal Halloween. So Sam Hain, in his eyes, like most great villains, doesn't see himself as a villain. He's doing he's doing everybody a favor. Yep. Uh, by extending Halloween indefinitely. Um, Egon gets him out of this uh, highly volatile and really intense encounter by shining a flashlight on to sam hain and it actually causes him to to leave sam hain yep. doesn't like this flashlight light him up boys it, yeah it, you know and uh they figured out what his weakness is at that point you know so um sad sadness coming up though because we get we see uh sam hain pretty much torturing slimer yeah 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 you know, uh, and like Peter yelled something out like, don't mess with my buddy or nobody messes with him except for me, you know, with my buddy. Yeah, um, I have that written. I have that written down, too. I really like that. Yeah, that was that was sweet. Um, but yeah, they're they're pretty much torturing Slimer at this point. Uh, the monsters are he is uh, Sam Hain is, I mean, mm -hmm. and uh, Egon's telling them that he needs a distraction while he puts together like this big light thing because all the power's off in the city there's no power so he's uh but they but they check and see that their pro their proton packs are still working because they're nuclear so, of course yeah which they don't mention that but like winston then again winston's not a doctor in this continuity so he was all like well at least our packs are still working duh <laughs> um so egon needs a distraction and uh, it's kind of funny peter's all like uh he's like go distract the horde of the army of ghosts while i put this together and peter's like 
He's given us such an easy job that it's not really fair to him. <laughs> yeah. He tells them he tells them that his is the best uh thing that they need to do is a full frontal attack. Yeah. So like Ray, Peter, and Winston need to just like it's almost like a video game. They start yeah. at the bottom level of the the, the skyscraper or the tower and they work their way up fighting through demons, ghosts, and goblins all the way to Sam Hain. With the music playing, with the Ghostbusters yeah. theme playing, man. I like like the movie. Yes. Like the movie, man. And uh, it's a great final showdown up there before Egon does his part. But, like, they, they come up and they see Slimer in his hands. And that's when Peter says, hey, nobody messes with, with that little spud but me. Um, the way they save him, they tell Slimer to fight. And, you know, before... There's a scene where Slimer, before he gets like in the hands of Sam Haynes, Sam Haynes telling him, you will join me, you know, da, da, da. Slimer, for his part, like sticks his tongue out at him and stands strong. He doesn't try to run. You know, he's defiant. But at this point, he's starting to disappear in Sam Haynes' hand. And the boy, the Ghostbusters are worried because Slimer's about to be destroyed, apparently. And they lie to him to save him. They say uh like chicken leg in the sock or something you know ray's pizza. got a chicken leg in his pizza we got a pizza, pizza. over here and uh that's what gets slimer out of the gra out of the uh grip and that's uh that when slimer gets released that's when the lights come on right yeah so egon, as soon as slimer escapes because they say they have pizza uh egon has successfully rigged his proton pack to the spotlights he stole he said he needed four spotlights, but he only rigged up three. I don't know where the fourth one. I don't know why they would even say that. The headlines. Um, the, the, uh, Sam Haynes says he's going to kill Slimer. Slimer escaped. Uh, he wants them to surrender the packs. They don't. All of a sudden, boom. The the thing that Egon rigged up hits, and Sam Hain is in serious trouble, and all the little ones are going bye-bye. Yep. Music is hitting hard here. It goes from like background, low background to like full volume. Mm -hmm. uh, proton packs, the trap gets thrown out. And while they're trying to beat Sam Hain, all these little ones are like grabbing onto their faces and their legs and their arms. Yeah, they're in agony. They're yeah, in agony. It, it, they're hurting. Uh, me and Alex are trying to hurt them too, you know, as little goblins. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as, as everything's getting caught, Sam's voice is the scariest of the whole episode as he's being pulled into the trap. It's so demonic and creepy. And the face on the clock goes away. And it was pretty creepy looking too. Um, Egon shows up after it's done. And, you know, he missed all the fun. You know, he didn't get to see the full frontal attack. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we're definitely going to have to review Sam Hain's second episode. Uh, it's called uh, Halloween Two and a Half. It's not as scary and as good. But, you know, maybe at some point uh, we can review that. Sure. Halloween. sure. But, Dude, we got a lot of Saturdays in our future, buddy. Yeah, yeah definitely um but yeah they 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 capture sam hain and they put him in the uh, there's a whole scene where they put him in the containment unit yeah and, uh, they have and they have us there and they're watching him in the containment unit and unlike the other thousands and thousands of little ones they just trapped who are in agony gnashing their teeth it's almost like biblical like they're in hell yeah the only one who is sitting there unbothered patient with his hands folded silently waiting is who, Josh? Sam Hain. Because mm -hmm. he Hain. waited 1,200 years before. What's another 1,200 years? And there's an episode where they go into the containment unit later on to get the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man out, which I don't know how they trapped him, but that's a that's story for another day. He's in like three episodes, really good sure. episodes. Um, <clears throat> the terror dogs are in there too in that episode. But no, he's in there, and it's really kind of creepy. Like, yeah, he's sitting there, you know, Arms crossed, legs crossed, uh, but it's it's creepy because you think about what's on his mind. You know, he He's waited. Pissed, obviously, <laughs> he waited thousands of years. He can do it again. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, the funny part is here, though. Um, let's see here. As the episode ends, they're they they stop looking at Sam Hain, and all of a sudden the lights go out in the containment unit room, and a pumpkin starts floating through the air towards them like a lit jack-o'-lantern and they scream and then they realize it's Janine. I hope you have a note for this. Cause I do as the camera, the, well, the camera, you know what I mean? Pans out of the building. All of a sudden you hear Janine start going, guys, stop. Oh my God, that tickles. And, <laughs> and I've got written down. 
did what are they doing to janine <laughs> guys <laughs> they need to release some tension man they've been fighting ghosts for the last week and it's all in one day they need to they need to release josh so the orgy just started okay got it <laughs> we need some lube come here slimer we need pumpkin seed stat release sam Hain so we can get some of that good pumpkin guts <laughs> slimer won't give us no lube oh slimer there's a pizza down here all right. oh no um <laughs> <laughs> so slimer could never lie if he stole food in the fridge you know like hey did you eat my leftovers because you could just see it in his gut <laughs> oh my god speaking of slimer i can't wait to review ghostbusters frozen empire one day because when the uh the ghost that can possess the possessor possesses the pizza yeah i was watching that in theaters and me and anthony were like oh slimer come on slimer and slimer shows up and eats it it was so good it was so good felt That's like funny. that movie feels like a live action real ghostbusters yeah for sure but yeah so one more what's that one more what one more commercial break sure let's do it we have to take a break gang but we'll be right back with more of the real ghostbusters Ghostbuster Sloop! Meow! I know something scary. Cavities. Time to brush. Aw, oh, Mom! Hey! Mom got a Slimer toothpaste! Ooh! It's, it's Slimer! Let's play Cavity Buster! Toothbrush, Ray! Check the gun! Slimer toothpaste, Ray! Check the gun! Ready? Let's brush! No ghosts in there, Mom! Slimer, Graper Bubblegum Fluoride Toothpaste, available at Target, Osco, Save On, Stop and Shop, and Finest. We've been expecting you. All right, Josh, it's the moment of truth, buddy. Uh, did you like the episode? I think I know your answer. Oh, and loved it. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. What um, did I like it? Hell yeah, I liked it. Uh, especially, I like it even more after Josh and I talked about it because there was a lot of things that I noticed on my own that I wasn't sure if I was crazy or not. But it definitely felt like it was a mini movie. And then after doing research and finding out that Harold Ramis, who played Egon, and Dan Aykroyd, who played Ray, wrote the episode, it all makes sense now. Yes. Um, that, just a phenomenal episode. I would say a standalone episode. This could have been, like, I know this is our Slash Tracks Halloween Saturday morning special. Um, for sure. Josh, um... Was there anything about this episode that you didn't like? It was too short. That's the only thing okay. I didn't like. I love the 80s music, even the synthesized stuff that was popping in the background. I love the story, love the characters. There wasn't a whole lot of animation mistakes. It felt like the humor from the movies. Um, I just loved it. I loved it all, man. I didn't dislike anything, really. I really didn't. I would say the only thing that I disliked about it was that it was too short, and I didn't like that... Um, I wanted to see more of what Sam Hain could do. Yeah. I wanted to see more. Like, he's very menacing. He's terrifying. He's obviously a badass. Ever, all the other ghosts respect him. I kind of wanted to see why they respected him. An I wanted to see. Would have been good. Yeah. I wanted to see more of him. I wanted to see more of what he could do, is all. Um, what were your favorite parts? Uh, pretty much all of it. The, anything with Sam Hain, the skeleton diner was probably one of my favorite parts. So yeah, that creepy. was, so that was creepy. phenomenal. I, I, Jason Reitman, if you make another Ghostbusters movie, put Sam Hain in live action. You're going to sell tickets, I swear. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, or the Boogeyman. Put them both in. Both, yeah. Uh, fav my favorite parts. I have uh, the final battle where the Ghostbusters are working their, their way up the, the, you know, the building, blasting their way to the top to Sam Hain, who's like the final boss. Egon is racing against time to rig up his, light pa his uh, proton pack to the light, uh, to the satellites or, or to the fucking strobe lights or whatever. And uh, hopefully he makes it in time. I love it. It felt like a video game. I loved it. Great. Super good. Um, and then I also have Slimer is great. He's great in the entire episode. And Peter standing up for Slimer is even better. Because if you watch the episode, if you watch the show, Peter like can't stand Slimer, but he yeah. does love him. And it, when it comes down to it, he does. Yeah. Um, and Slimer wasn't annoying in this one. You know, sometimes later on in the show, he gets very annoying, but it was just the perfect amount of Slimer. 
and it was so much fun. It really was. I can't wait to give you my rating for it. What what what's the rating system? Uh, <laughs> so I said, okay, hold on. Okay, okay. How many victory pizzas for Slimer out of four? Five. <laughs> Giving it five. Giving it. It's not an option. Four. Okay, I give it four. Four. Okay, I give it a three and a half. So this dude, well, st this might be. <laughs> the highest rated episode of a slash track Saturday morning we've ever done. Cause the aggregate score is 3.75 out of four. Yep. I think uh, Ninja quest as a whole got that, but not any of the episodes got that. Um, but yeah, I think four. this was the highest, the highest rated episode that we reviewed. Um, I also had one more thing I want to talk about. Yeah. One little thing. Um, you know, this is New York City, and I know all the power's off and all the lights are off and everything, but there's a lot of scenes where there's no extras or or background humans in the in the scene. I, yeah. I just kind of like, what? where are they? They didn't, uh, like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Scared. That's the only thing I really had a little bugaboo with, really. Great well, episode. Why couldn't it get that other half a point, though? I just not just not long enough, and I wanted to, and I have a paragraph here, I just wanted to see more of what sam hain yeah. could do okay. i wanted him more fleshed out so if anything it's not getting a perfect score because what they gave me was perfect gotcha. i wanted more yeah so they did a good job they left me wanting more if you, if we're going to be honest about it the, the reason some episodes that we've reviewed in the past aren't good is because they gave us too much yeah they did sometimes they do yep. yeah no this was good they left me wanting more on the table this is like seinfeld after like season eight or nine they're like we're number one we're done see you later <laughs> bye <laughs> yeah no great episode man um josh hit him with some channel news and happy halloween yes uh thanks for watching and yes. let's get out of here happy halloween slash aholics and slash kateers be sure to head over to the other channel slash tracks network with alex vanover so you can see all the past episodes of slash tracks saturday morning and all the future episodes this is what we do on that show so if you enjoyed it get over there be sure to like subscribe and comment on this video uh Hit us up at slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com. If you want to support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash 80 slash librarian. You can order a cameo video. There's $7 right now. Uh, cameo.com forward slash slash tracks network. Uh, you can also support us through uh, PayPal or Cash App if you want to. All the information's in the pinned comment and in the description below. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Be excellent to each other. And remember, the sun never sets on those who ride into it. Um, I think that's it. Say goodnight, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dogs. Uh, and the sun never sets, even when it's Halloween forever. Happy Halloween, Slash Kateers. <laughs>